the fair traveler went to Baltimore to see Red Emma's bookstore and coffee house. Colin met us there and told the story of Red Emma's, promoting literacy is their goal. Listen to their innovative business model on how to. I see there's always a support manager during the day at my store, so they'll have a rotating cast of managers for us.
Oh no, Sam Cedar, what a fucking nightmare. 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 Canada, it's time to vote again. Are you going to vote for your weird racist uncle or that trust fund baby who's done black and brown face multiple times? What if there was a third option? Vote NDP. This corporate activism does all the work for us and perfectly pacifies us. Pacifies the very innate threat of human destruction into an ideal that we can pervasively enjoy. Where in other societies, propaganda is needed to cover up repressive acts, the exact opposite. After months of frothing at the mouth at school board meetings, the far right is incensed at the notion some might consider them domestic terrorists because of that, which I find pretty hilarious.
Tino was an anarchist warlord and one of the most successful guerrilla commanders in all of history. Um, oh, without him, we probably would never have had a Soviet Union, which is a mixed bag. And he was, was not like, oh. trying to make a Soviet Union. Uh, I should note that That's he actually good, really that, didn't want everyone, it to happen. Not a well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Tribunus Plebis podcast. This was going to be a New Year's episode with a nice little happy start, but some stuff happened today. It is January 6th right now, and there are a bunch of assholes running around the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. We oftentimes dismiss conservatives as, you know, not smart or maybe not the brightest, you know, bulbs in the bunch. But they are able to demonstrate a level of cognitive dissonance or rather some mental gymnastics that's brilliant here because in this instance, they are going to clearly see the hypocrisy. Taken on toward millions. Taken on toward millions. We can break their body power. Let me show this thing. We're going to go to the north direction. And uh, a lot of people don't know. I got a lot of questions when I started putting out the flyers because a lot of people in our own community didn't know what Tigray was or who Tigrayans are, where they come from, where their homeland is. A lot of our own people here on Turtle Island, we don't know. We don't do our homework very well. We don't know indigenous peoples outside of Turtle Island.
Sure. Okay, so uh, my name is Ethan McQuaid. We operate Four Street Farms right in St. Francisville, Illinois. And what got us into farming was uh, actually in the small farming community, there's a lot of podcasts, YouTube videos. Yeah. And so I used to be a welder, right? And uh, I was listening to my headphones one day and I came across a podcast called Farm Small, Farm Smart by uh, Diego. Um, I can't remember his last name, but he was interviewing a farmer named Curtis Stone. I don't know. Yeah, the market garden. Right. Yep. So I listened to that podcast, and about four hours after I finished it, uh, I quit my job. I called my wife, and I said, hey, we're going to start a farm. Okay. Duke Rockwins have come to count on for news and communicating with each other about current events, and in this case, about the election. <laughs> I had to. Um, anyways. So it is very troubling that it was obviously targeted against one political group, the Sandinistas, said Daniel Kovalik, a human rights lawyer and an observer of this weekend's elections. Danger. The emergency message said people in the area should not delay leaving and not gather belongings or make efforts to protect their homes. Jesus Christ. There was a red flag warning for most of the front range until 5 p.m., but the warning area runs just up to, but not in Laramar County. Still high wind, low humidity, and unusual warm temperature will create risk. get you it doesn't get you canceled Wait, look what? like there's a whole no. group of people in my dms right now who totally think i'm racist who totally think i'm a bigot and it's really crazy and i wish i could show you but holy shit with that being said like none of these people have actual power over me they're just names on the internet the main reason why the united states uh um why the colonists uh rioted and revolted against uh against the Britain was because the UK, sorry, um, because the uh, the king had actually made uh, tri uh, had actually made deals um, and treaties with the indigenous peoples to give uh, the United States, uh, the, the Americas, right, to give them certain lands. The colonists wanted more of those lands. They felt it was unfair, and that was actually like the main reason for those rioting because they didn't they didn't feel and for the revolt, right, like, because they didn't, I, they didn't feel like that was fair for the king to be able to make treaties on their behalf. So I think I, I look. I mean, look with with respect. Fuentes is never going to be moved over because he makes money from the show, a lot of money. I saw that big Bitcoin transfer. Oof. Uh, he 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 gets banked from this, but most of the people who follow Fuentes, because I've talked to his fans, you know, they call him supporters, are deeply emotionally immature people. And I don't mean that in some kind of patronizing generic insult way. I mean that literally, like. They, there is there's an element of their personal identity that they're either uncomfortable with or haven't fully adopted and they're looking for a kind of group identity to attach themselves to specifically communist theory. And we will also be giving tips for new revolutionaries and making fun of libs. So, well, so welcome y'all to my channel. I try to break it down real easy for people to understand anything that I'm saying and anything that the guys from the past said as well. So come on down and hang out with me and we'll bullshit about communism, thank you. No people in 
the ocean over there. It's completely empty. Look at this, Fidel Castro and his evil regime has removed all of the people from the ocean. How dare they? The interest on loaned money capital is only a part of profit. Profit, whether on industrial or commercial capital, is only a part of the surplus value taken by the capitalist class from the working class in the form of unpaid labor. The economic laws which govern the state the rate of interest are as independent of those which govern the rate of surplus value as could possibly be the case with laws of one and same form of society. I have a similar feelings with the Ahmad Arbery trial and probably the whole injustice system itself, which is that, you know, it doesn't center victims. And it, you can, you know it's true because especially right now, they're, they're about to put the defendant on the stage, dude, on the stand. I keep calling it this stage. They're about to put the defendant on the stand. And he's just going on and on and on and on, dog whistling, talking about all the crime in the neighborhood, all this theft. Word, how is everyone doing? This is gonna be a great show. A weird show and a great show. Uh, viewers, so this is not Meet the Left. This is the new show, The Sabbath Cipher. The name comes from two things. First of all, Black Sabbath, which is probably all here for some reason because of that band. And The Cipher is the five percenters, an offshoot of the Nation of Islam. It's a means of education that they use where people would stand in a circle and just you know shoot off knowledge and wisdom and everyone would kind of build off and ask questions about it and the idea is that you know we all live our lives and learn things Well done. Well done. Thomas Medularis. 
<laughs> well, you know what, Connors? I respect the game, so I'm just going to give you a timeout. That's it. Normally, I would just throw down the hammer, but I'm in a good mood right now. I had an awesome interview with Tim Black, so there's that. But I did get caught. That is why he uses printouts now. He just has too much pornography on his phone. He has too much pornography on his phone and he cannot trust himself on live stream to not accidentally show like his porn. That is incredible. Oh my goodness, I hadn't put those points together. That is, what a fantastic observation. Thank you for that, Dao Roomba. I, I literally just said on my show, Look him up. there's any watching your uh, church militant YouTube channel and uh, I was watching a, a very lovely Milo on there um, showing the, the, the adoring virgin statue and I was just wondering if y'all had a <clears throat> if y'all had a corn statue that maybe I could buy because at my altar of Christ I like it are literally ruining your sleep and it's for the worst reason. You know how twice a year we change our clocks? Yeah, it's the most ridiculous scheme that ever happened in American history. But the reason why we do it will make you even more mad. You see, it turns out big businesses think that if there's more daylight hours in the evening, that you'll spend more money at the mall. Now you could say, hey, but we could just adjust either way. Well, you see, everybody has a chronotype and a chronotype means your body has a preferred time of sleeping. Then it actually matters a lot that you keep that schedule. You might think that you can adjust to any sleep schedule, but the truth is you can't. Today, I'm just chatting about my politics and why I made this channel. I've mentioned before in my previous videos, I used to be all white. A diet bigot, if you must. Thanks to college, my friends, maturing and learning as a person, and watching Nazis get back to fuck out in debates on YouTube, it opened my eyes to the now progressive politics I now hold. You see, I'm against all types of bigotry. Your silence gives consent, or the penalty good men pay for indifference 
is to be ruled by evil men. He also came to the big brain conclusion that man can best be defined as a featherless biped. <laughs> but for all the wisdom of one of the most central figures in philosophy, he also owned slaves. governments that they control have grown not just into monopolistic markets, but rather into digital fiefdoms in which you, me, all of us are their neo selves. Last time I talked about Kyle Rittenhouse was literally when the shootings happened. I don't give a shit. I'm probably the only person in this entire space who when I say I don't give a fucking shit about Kyle Rittenhouse, that uh, I'm actually telling the truth. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, trans replicate. Yeah, 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 yuck it up, yuck it up. You, you said Kyle Rittenhouse a couple seconds ago. Yeah, not in this stream, obviously. Thank you. Where uh, it's just me talking the news. I've had a bunch of great interviews. I want to thank everybody for coming on. See Derek Varn, um, of course, uh, uh, um, Mike McGinnis of the uh, You Don't Know History podcast came on to talk about Afghanistan, and he's a, um, a veteran of the Afghanistan war, which is now ended. Uh, big news, of course. So y'all can go back and watch that interview. Had a good time talking with him uh, and, and Varn as well. And uh, C. Derek Varn had me on his show. Go check out his channel. Um, if you're here, let me know. Say hi. You're going to see this video. You're going to know that I made this video. You probably know that I'm covering you right now. Are you aware of the fact that you're bullshitting? That you're just making shit up? addressed um, at all uh, redlining only started to really fade in the 90s to imagine that this doesn't have any like real uh, ish, uh, real like real world effects today is um, honestly laughable I think um, I, I look I mean look with with respect Fuentes is never going to be moved over because he makes money from the sh a lot of money I saw that big Bitcoin transfer Woo. Uh, he, he, he gets banged from this but most of the people who follow Fuentes because I've talked to his fans you know they call themselves workers are deeply emotionally immature people. I do not say that again. The postal service is amazing. It has been an engine of upward mobility. It has been right, an engine uh... of racial equality. If you are uh, building the black middle class, massively an engine of that. Have you it, ever... it is, it is, I have, and the postal service will carry a letter from here to Alaska for, no, not for the same price, and it's certainly not going to serve you know more. It's gonna get there. No, I do not know that, and it's certainly not going to do it. It's never going to get there with as much service to out of the way rural areas. I got to give you credit. Anything. I've never anything. heard of anyone defend the like, like, like it's cheap. Like, you need to talk more people because, like, the post office is the basic institution. How free do you feel if you're on the precipice of financial ruin? If you can't afford uh, paying for a medical emergency that you're experiencing, what do you do when you don't have health insurance, which tens of millions of Americans right now don't have 
because of the exorbitant prices associated with it. How free do you feel if you're a wage worker who has not experienced your real wages increase in literally decades? Wages have not kept up with inflation. So how free do you feel when you want to leave your job, but you can't because your health care benefits are tied to that work or tied to that job? I mean, freedom, again, is an interesting way of framing it because I would venture to say that there's a significant portion of the population in the United States, significant portion of workers in this country that do not, in fact, feel free. In fact, have uh, experienced the precarious nature of a capitalistic system that forces them to work endlessly if they're lucky in a full-time job, if they're unlucky in several part-time jobs that they cobble together with no benefits just to make ends meet. You need to produce stuff in order life. to live. What about What's government that? protecting your life if you, um, if the building falls? Like, it's not every one of the 150 people who died and they made that decision. Sure. The children didn't. They were shareholders of a, of a building and they were they had representatives. Oh, the shareholders are owners and they're responsible for the decision making that they, the decisions they make. But, um... The past. Now let me address the question of capitalism. Here's what capitalism is not distinguished by, and therefore is not useful as a definition. Markets. Slavery has markets. It's a different economic system. Feudalism had markets for much of its history. That's not a definition of capitalism that's unique. Capitalism doesn't uniquely have markets. That's silly. Free or controlled markets, which is all we've ever had in the world, the controlled kind, are as old as, as, as Plato and Aristotle, who argued over markets. By the way, both of them opposed markets and thought they were socially destructive institutions, just for the uh, as a footnote you might be interested in. But capitalism is unique in one way. It's not a system that's unique in its markets. It's not a, a system that is unique in its quote-unquote free enterprises. Those are as old as Methuselah. But here is what's unique. Earlier systems, for example, slavery, organized the production of goods and services around the dichotomy of a slave and a master. The master owned all the equipment, all the means of production, and including the worker himself and herself. He owned that. That was a very unusual way of organizing things, but it existed for a long time. Did it have markets? Often. Did it sometimes exist without markets? You bet. Then there's feudalism, radically different. But Bill Maher had a very hot take regarding young people. He, as a boomer, I'm assuming, is going to tell young people that their ideas are stupid and they're very silly. Take a look. Abolish the police and the border patrol and capitalism and cancel Lincoln. No, I get it. The problem is not that I don't get what you're saying or that I'm old. The problem is that your ideas are stupid. I have to say, the worst part about Bill Maher is that whenever he thinks he makes a good point, he'll do this weird, like, smug 
sort of half smile. It's like, like the, the Democrats didn't want people to know that they passed this, or if it was more like, I need to uh, shore up my chances of becoming majority leader um, when the Republicans take over in midterms. What was your sense of like what McCarthy was do doing? And then we'll, we'll talk about the, the, the bill itself. Debt. Right? Now from the toy world, was it a case of crossed wires or a major corporate U-turn when news broke that the company Hasbro was losing the Mr. from Mr. Potato Head? Happy the Blue huh. now has a bad reputation and therefore has to be cut out. There's no end in sight for all this. Nobody is perfect enough for the masses. Oh, right, I almost forgot. Which is weird because we just did a video about this topic and this episode was written beforehand and with care, but everything from the right is about cancel culture now. DemocracyNow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. More than 120 world leaders gathered in Glasgow, Scotland, Monday for the opening of a crucial United Nations climate summit whose outcome could determine the future habitability of the planet. The COP26 Climate Change Conference, as it's officially called, opened with this dire warning from UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Boris Johnson betraying the North by rolling back on some of his HS2 promises. COVID in Europe, I'm not looking as good as it has been over the past few months. And Jordan Peterson's intervention on question time last night is definitely one to watch. in Israel. We're not going to talk about it because, we're told, it's too complicated to understand or discuss or do anything about. But, the counterpoint, we will talk about it because is it too complicated to understand? For an overthrow of the government after he lost the election. Just a, a little, a little oopsie coopsie. Coozy. Anyway, oh boy, are the GOP super shocked about the whole sedition thing, aren't they? Uh, the first thing that stands out to me is how embarrassed and disgusted I am that the United States Capitol could be taken over by domestic terrorists while we're in session, transferring power from one president to the other. Lindsey Graham, the guy who backed Trump's false claims of election fraud, shocked. We've got a proliferation of educational and political YouTubers, but that content is produced in a really asymmetrical way, with big YouTubers and, more common on the right, big companies able to have a much larger impact than small, and in my case, criminally underrated channels. So I remain deliberately ignorant of anything that might change my mind. It comes from the ancient Greek word doxa, which translates into English as Rebecca from that one nightclub in Essex. There's a subtle point here which you might disagree with, which is that believing or not believing something can be a moral matter. Anarchy is a form of living together in society, a society in which people live as brothers and sisters without being able to oppress or exploit others, and in which everyone has at their disposal whatever means the civilization of the time can supply in order for them to attain the greatest possible moral and material development. And anarchism is the method of reaching anarchy through freedom without government, that is, without those authoritarian institutions that impose their will on others by force. The ever-changes hands, it's 
entirely possible to develop something like that as well. It's almost like this is a really bad system overall, which may benefit a few people, especially those who manage to get very ensconced in deep wealth to the point where their wealth is really never going to be threatened. I feel that within modern anarchist circles, the concept of property, its justifications and its implications for our politics isn't explored as much as its fundamental role in anarchist and socialist politics demands. Most anarchists know that the property rights which give rise to the plutocratic oligarchy that we live in today, known as capitalism, is incompatible with the concept of a free society and so they rightly reject it. tell you a couple of strange things that that things that I don't really understand how to seem profound when all you have to say has no real value make vague statements that are technically right something like many moral values are similar across different cultures in light of the recent IPCC report issuing a code red warning for humanity climate hopelessness is at an all-time high as I've spoken about many times before in my videos addressing the climate movement, Gen Z, and the psychology of collapse, there's no mince in words and no sense in beating around the bush. We are in hell, and in many ways, things are gonna get worse. Man's terrifying journey into the dark heart of an immigrant induced, crime ridden, murder infested. Rodeo Nightmare. The horrors he endured would be etched on his soul for eternity. So we're walking around Rosengard. It's uh kind of boring. This really is considered to be, you know, the poorest or worst in Sweden. Wow. Sweden's doing Sweden's doing pretty well. It's snowing. It's snowing. You know, I don't know what you'd expect to happen here. It's just a neighborhood. There's a lot of people who think that, you know, you'll get robbed here, that there's a lot of sex crimes or anything like that. You know, that's not the case. They said that we'd get robbed if we came out here. No. Joseph Watson had to just straight up make lies up about it like this. There was a Lebanese shopkeeper in Malmo 
who is an immigrant himself, he wants to move back to Lebanon. Do you ever plan on going back to Lebanon? To live there? Yeah. No. Sweden is better? Or... Yeah, it's the best country. But fortunately for Tim, he did manage to have just one incident that was still, in my opinion, excruciatingly boring, yet somehow aided right-wing media outlets like the Daily Wire in making claims like... But it turns out Sweden really has become a stinking cesspool of f***ing violence. Oh, okay. So, uh, I've prepared. Okay. Yes. All right, so what we so were going to talk about is, uh, what we were going to talk about is, you know, the initial quote that happened. I think he's looking off there. Uh, the initial quote that kind of was turned into um, a little bit uh, of a meme, which wasn't intentional, and uh, was you saying you don't even have to think about it regarding the CDC. Hmm. Uh, and I disagree with that. Um, I think people should think about it, I believe. And we'd said, talked about this through playful ribbing and an aggregation of medical authorities and scientific voices to make an informed and rational decision. Um, so where do you think that, I was, that I'm wrong on that? Steven, do you know that um, the Spartans are, that they are like, uh, practice man love with children? Oh, geez. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. I to what did I tell you? He was going to do anything he could to avoid. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh, no, Sam Cedar. What a, wow, what a fucking nightmare. Irony alert, Stephen. Stop being a bitch. Stop being a baby. He's like, come on, Stephen. <clears throat> I think he lost the right to the to those holsters. I think he has to retire them. <laughs> oh, sweetie. What kind of a pussy am I talking to? What happened to you? <laughs> Bro, it was a dope movie, and you're a fucking communist. Can't wait for Avatar 2. That black gay people are black first, which is a really weird and stupid thing to try to assert. The underlying point to that comment is that because they're black first, they should be okay with other black people mistreating them on the basis of being gay. There's no other reason to point that out. Because whenever I hear black people complain about gay black people doing something, all they're really doing is defending themselves against aggressive, homophobic black people doing the most because nobody checks them on that shit. See this week? But if you aren't, Allow me to <coughs> put you on game. How do you do, fellow kids? Because Stradivarius instruments are a flex all on their own. They're a specially made type of string instrument said to have a superior sound quality compared to other stringed instruments. Stradivariuses regularly sell for millions of dollars. Probably, but certainly not here. I don't have a formal training in philosophy, theology, or anything. If you're an educated person, it may be quite frustrating to watch me stumble through this, and for that I apologize. You don't need to take my opinion seriously. I don't even know how to put on eyeliner. This is instead a video about what grappling with the question of whether or not God exists means to me. Point, newbie. First things first, welcome to the Evening Gazette. It's uh, great to have you on board. You know, it was a really tricky recruitment process, and you got through because of your hard work, dedication, and only a little bit because I went to school with your dad. So you should be very, very proud of yourself. Secondly, I recognize that look in your eye. Since the 1970s, there have been at least 18 gangs within the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and they continue to brutalize and even murder community members today. My name is Cerise Castle and I am a journalist. In the summer of 2020, I was working for a local radio station here in Los Angeles and I was out covering the George Floyd rallies that were happening across the country, across the world. We're talking about anti-racist music, specifically a few songs, but the main one we're going to be talking about is Accidental Racist. And I know that may have been something that was really talked about in the past few years, but like I, knowing the political climate now, I still think it's relevant to be discussed, along with the other songs we're going to be talking about. The 
black right wing of American politics is one of the most frankly weird and inexplicable phenomena in American politics. In a country torn apart by racial resentment and supremacy, divided into camps based on real material action, individual solutions, and denial of the problem even exists, the black right wing serves as one of the more shocking aspects of our political environment. Area, owing to his Cuban heritage, provides plausible deniability for the Proud Boys' more overtly racist members and activities. Terrio's five months and five day sentence is merely one headline in a number of high profile arrests, charges, and sentences for members of the so called Western Chauvinist gang following the Proud Boys' involvement in the Capitol riot. I told you that comic blocks aren't that bad, actually. On the contrary, they're pretty good, both in terms of architecture and city planning. In many cases, they can even beat brand new housing development. But how is that possible? Let's find out. If I do. I do wonder why she brought this up because there was no mention of toxic waste before 2018, which kind of suggests she was looking for a post hoc justification, but oh well. In any case, Lauren is being conservative here. It was actually 24 tons. This was another one of Salvini's claims against the Aquarius, and where do you start? First of all, I'm not sure why she thinks it was dumped in the sea. And that's all great. change now, I don't know how much longer I'll live, and I would regret not changing every day until the end. I really hope that kid who came up to me and said I was a masculine role model won't feel like I've let him down too much. It's been a privilege before me for you.
and stuff on the show. So for the final part of today's episode, I wanted to drop the act and for once just to explain to you what's going on. So first of all, this is not a joke. This is not a performance. It's not part of the theater. This is real. I'm transgender. If you've seen any Philosophy Tube before, you might have known me by a different name. But off camera, all my friends and family call me Abigail. You underestimate the fundamental sadness of the human condition, and no amount of fame and money is gonna fix that. You know, fame alienates you from other people. It dehumanizes you in the eyes of the masses, which can actually make you feel more alone, even when people are worshiping you as a goddess. Never mind how it feels when they're hunting you as a witch. The truth is that unless you've personally experienced infamy, being shamed and shunned on a scale the human brain can't really even understand, then you just don't know what it's like. The CIA is a horrible organization that should be immediately abolished. I'm not gonna say it's the most evil organization currently in existence because that would be unfair to other evil groups like ISIS or the FBI or people who bring acoustic guitars to house parties. It's also just very hard to quantify evil, but I think there is a pretty decent case to be made that it's at least one of the organizations that's caused the most harm to the world. The CIA has toppled democratically elected governments, installed and supported brutal military dictatorships, funneled vast amounts of money from the global south to rich Americans, knowingly lied to citizens of foreign countries, citizens of America, and even American presidents, all the while showing a truly chilling disregard for human life and destroying America's already pretty bad reputation around the world. But don't get the wrong idea though, the CIA was not able to pull all that off because they're crafty or impressive or geniuses of spycraft. No, central intelligence, more like central people who, who suck. Got them. And we must keep endless watch on ourselves, lest in a careless moment we breathe in somebody's face and fasten the infection on him. It's wearing business to be plague stricken but even more wearing to refuse to be it. Albert Camus, The Plague. In the 1947 book, The Plague, Albert Camus tells a fictional story about the Algerian port town of Oran, a town that is full of busy, happy people. <laughs> Don't worry, vaccines are perfectly safe, according to me. You might notice a little prick. <laughs> oh. Hello and welcome back to hell. I'm just vaccinating my profiteroles, immunizing them against the horrendous disease known only as not enough cream, itis. Unfortunately, while vaccines are great at stimulating my balls, in humans they've become quite the controversial topic. In Denmark, the Queen is the head of state and the Prime Minister is the head of government. In the United States of America, the President is both the head of state and the head of government. Internationally, this is not too unusual as many nation states in Africa and South America combine head of state and head of government. But this is unusual, even unique, in the global north, the term associated with rich nations. 